You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing on this last day of July? It has been a hot one. I think we had like a heat index this past week. It's been absolutely insane. Um, if you haven't been following, uh, I remember last week when we did the the New River episode, you know, huge shout out for for everyone that watched that episode and really made it trend in the Google algorithm for for a little bit of time. Our RJ Hoover actually won that event. I think he had a total of, oh Lord, I don't I want to make sure that I, I get this right and I don't get completely eated out here. Um, but it was definitely not the kind of event that we were, we were, we were hoping for. I know at the end of day one, he had about 81 inches. I think in total, he had 168.25, not a stellar event. Uh, I was kind of shocked that that place did not pan out. Um, but with all that said, I got a really good guess. This guy's a legend. He basically runs the upper Potomac. If you are fishing from the Great Falls up to the split or more, you've seen this legend. He's been on the show probably about a thousand times at this point. Jeff, how are you doing yeah. tonight? Hey, what's up, man? So you've been a busy bee, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, let me get my stuff set up there. Perfect. You sound beautiful. And always chat. Just let me know how we sound in the comment section. If we sound a little high, a little low. I'll make the adjustments as needed. Um, you know, we're here in August right now. What is the temperature like out there water wise on the upper Potomac? Probably about eight. It's about 84 degrees, 85 degrees. Is that a little higher or a little lower for this time of year? That's about right. It's about right. Yeah. So how's the, how's the fishing been? You've been busy though with guiding and everything right now, which is fantastic. Yeah, it, it's been good. The, the fishing has been real good. It, um, it's good up until about late morning and then it gets tough. And then, uh, from there you just, you find them here and there. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. It, it's just, it's such a weird time of year. Um, they're in the grass you know, too. They're, they're, they're real heavy in the grass. The grass Let's is see. big right now. Oh yeah. There's grass everywhere on the upper Potomac river. Really? Yep. Oh, wow. How, how hard does that make it with the jet boat? Oh, well it's, it's just below the surface right now. It's going to be real tough whenever it reaches the, um, surface and and it's you know there's nowhere to, no way to get around it mm, i can't believe it hasn't even topped out yet no it's still growing it's growing real heavy around white's ferry how did the smallmouth re like relate to that type of vegetation they just they, they feed in it they hide in it and uh they just make their uh, uh they spend their day there mm. so um, what kind of Cause it's so weird. Cause like when you think of vegetation, you usually think of like big old green, large mouth, you know, like on the tidal Potomac, but you don't think of small mouth. Yeah. They're, um, they're just, you can see them. They just swim in and out of the, uh, uh, you'll see them in the open areas of the uh, grass, wherever there's a hole in the grass and you can see the bottom, you'll see them swimming there. And, and there's, there's, uh, there's tons and tons of, uh, a bait fish, I guess you want to call it minnows, river minnows, whatever you want to call them. They're probably all different kinds of fish. Um, hmm you know, trying to, uh, you know, from, from the spawn and stuff like that. How do you go about with customers? How do you fish that vegetation? Um, I like right now, I like to find, uh, areas where, uh, where there's, there's uh, structure coming out of the water, like trees. The smallmouth seem to relate to the trees in, in these kind of conditions. Gotcha. 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 So you kind of, it, it, are you looking for trees that are kind of associated with the vegetation or just avoid? Yeah, they're, they're, they're in, um, uh, deeper than average, you know, they're, they're in, you know, four or five feet of water. And, uh, if there's a tree or, uh, branch or something, it can just be real small, something that's in the water. That's, uh, that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll, uh, they'll be there. And when I say relate it, that, that these small mouths seem to, um, their idea of relating to something, they can be 25 yards off of it, but they're near it. Mm, okay. So it's, it's really, and it's so funny you say that when I fished, um, they have a perimeter almost like they're, they're, uh, hanging out around the, uh, that piece of wood or whatever it is in the water. Yeah. It's almost like, it's like, that's the central hub. And then you're right. They like patrol it. Like it's their property and they're yeah. trying to keep like kids off of it. Um, 
when I was fishing a tournament on big slack, I think it was like two weeks ago now. And that's that, that damned up portion of the upper Potomac. Mm -hmm. It had the, all these marker buoys say like, this is mile one mile two. And sure as shit, <laughs> every buoy, if you cast it around it, not right at it, but around it, you could catch one. It might not be a keeper, but you could set your watch that. And it was so funny. If you cast it at the buoy, you wouldn't catch one just in that vicinity. You'd have success. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, it's so weird. Cause like if it was a large mouth, I feel like a large mouth would definitely be like right next to the buoy underneath of it for shade. But those small mouth, they're just completely different creatures. Yeah. They're, um, they, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, that they just patrol around it. And, um, if you don't catch them down the down river side of a tree, try the up river side of the tree and they'll be there. And then guys, if you didn't know, uh, this, this individual caught an absolute donk. And I sadly, I don't think, and maybe this is a little clickbaity. I don't know. Uh, I don't think this was a upper Potomac one, but you guys saw it in the thumbnail for tonight. Uh, you caught, how big was this fish? And I'll, I'll bring it up so people can. It was on, it. I mean, it, it's, it's on one of the rivers I guide on. It was on the Susquehanna. Yeah. That fish was um, just over 22 inches and it was like 6'3. Here it is. All righty. So what happened? Tell me this. I, I need, I need to finally hear this story. <laughs> There's not much to it. We were fishing, uh, um, near the shoreline and, um, around structure and, 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 uh, and cover. And, uh, it was in the middle of the day, complete surprise that a fish that size would, uh, bite in the middle of the day. And this was you that caught it, correct? Yeah. So what happened? You just yeeted it out there. All of a sudden it just goes tight. Yeah. He just, uh, I mean, it's nothing, nothing spectacular. Uh, it, um, it, the, the line just went heavy. And then, um, when I pulled back, it got real heavy. I don't know if it's because there's cover there and, you know, and some structure, but that fish would not come up. Hmm. Wanted to keep digging. And usually in the summertime, they come that's, right out. Yeah. Of the like that's well, how deep was it there? Okay, gotcha. I mean, it's a five little, feet. that's a, gives you a little bit of water. Work. And, and and the water wasn't um uh wasn't there wasn't much current there either. I mean, we're catching a lot of smaller fish right now this time of year, and so we're just we're just fishing where where we can catch fish, and uh, wherever there's smaller fish, there's big fish. Why is that the case that so many times this time of year? you have the numbers. Like if you want to take a kid out to catch something best time of year, if you're trying to catch your best five, it sucks. Well, because there's the, the water, the water's warmer, these smaller fish, there's more to eat. You know, everything's, everything's out and about, everything's moving. Um, you know, the crayfish, all the little types of, uh, crustaceans underwater, under rocks, um the bugs there's a lot of bugs out this time of year david williams that is a tank of a small mouth it is um that that picture isn't um i should have sent you a better one but that's still it it's uh, um i mean that that fish was uh i mean that that fish was it was long and it um it, it had some uh that's a still a, some girth to it too i had the customer well, he take a, that he picture is a for me. future in photography because that thing is a absolute beast of a small mouth it really is especially for this time of year um i mean i don't know if you you saw all of it like um last week i interviewed some guys uh, a guide for the the new river area because there's a big national kayak tournament that happened on the new and it really kind of like i think goes into today's conversation about summertime smallmouth and, and how hard it is to or, or it's, it's specific challenges when you go this time of year, whether it's the Susquehanna, Upper Potomac, New River, are there some things that people can take from each river that work this time of year? Just strategies? Um, probably all. This. They're, they're probably pretty pretty close to the same. Uh, you mean techniques? Yeah, techniques. Um, super early in the morning, I would start off with uh, with top water. Uh, you know, any type of top, top water technique that you like. I, I like using those. Uh, because I'm taking customers out. I like using that um, whopper plopper. It's very easy to operate. And I like that 90 size whopper, pl uh, whopper plopper. And then mm -hmm. um, we'll fish that for maybe 45 minutes or so. And and my whole idea of fishing a topwater bait is to see if we can catch the biggest fish of the day. And that's when it's going to happen. 
on a top water. Um, and then about 45 minutes after, we'll switch over to plastics. And there's only two plastics I've been, uh, I've just been using this entire time. The, um, uh, my version of a, a three inch stick bait, the SWFA stick bait. Uh, it's kind of like a Cinco, I guess. And, um, the. That's a good one too. I really like that size bait. Let me. Oh, there he is. He's back. Yeah. I, I, had, um, I had, a I had someone call me and then it, uh, kicked me off. Um, and then the, um, I mean, the, this, the, there's nothing spectacular, nothing fancy, uh, for the, uh, stick baits. I'm using a, here, I'll, I'll show you guys. As, yeah. Grab all the baits. Yeah. No, I, I have everything with me. I'm using a, um, where is it? This is it. It's a Charlie Brewer slider head, 16th ounce, one sixteenth, right here. And well, that, me... and that goes on the, um. That's so interesting because I really want to know. Can that. you hear me? Yep. People are calling me about tackle. Okay, here. Here we go. This is it. This is how I'm rigging it. Man, I wish it would have been better since I'm putting it on the um, screen. But just like that, can everyone see that? Yeah, it looks good. Just like that. And then and the jig head is up top. So now, do you hit that with some super glue? No, I just put it on there. Because once they once they uh, they tear up, I just uh, I just reform and reuse them. Um, and then for the ticklers, I'm using uh, the Z-Man ticklers. That's such a goofy name, but um, I'm using these jig heads that I, I pour. They're called SWFA finesse jig heads, and I use um, I'm using Anywhere from a 16th ounce, 332nd ounce, and a 1 8th ounce. Huh. But my, uh, this one's a 332nd. No, no, no. This one's an 8th. I like using the uh, 16th and the uh, 332nd. I like trying to use as light of weight as I could possibly get away with. What size rod, reel, and line are you using for that? The rods I'm using are medium light rods. They're 7 foot long. And the, um, and what did you, uh, you ask, the, the line? Yeah, I'm using um, braided line hooked to a uh, eight to ten pound uh, fluorocarbon leader, okay. and the braid and the line that I use is gamma fluorocarbon mm -hmm. and uh, gamma braid, which is gamma torque. Fifteen seems that's actually a really good size, cause especially because there's so many things that you can you can get torn up on down there. Do you ever go lighter? Uh, for the the weight. Uh, for your line. No, the, the uh, line's said... eight to eight to um, eight to ten pounds. Oh, eight to ten pounds. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, eight gotcha. to ten pounds. It just depends on what I have on, on the boat. Um, but yeah, to go lighter, I have. Um, I'm starting to use uh, light rods, uh, light action, with uh, like a uh, and and the reels that I'm using are one thousand series reels. Okay. I use those uh, Fuegos, those Daiwa. I have the Tulas. And Daiwa reels. I mean, and uh, uh, Daiwa Tatula and then Daiwa Fuego reels. Um, Ooh, dude, and, man, that's legit. And then I also use, uh, I, I really like them. I just can't get them uh, because I'm just an online store. Uh, Shimano uh, Vanfords. Oh, wow. Dude, that's really nice. I have the. So let's also grab all the other baits that you were talking about here because we're going to the questions pouring in. We got Brandon that says, what are your favorite bait colors? That is really all cool. right. So here, That's a big thing, Brandon. For the uh, for the tickler, this bait's a three hundred sixty five day a year bait. Doesn't matter what time of year you throw it. It's incredible. I don't know. I guess it's a profile of it. I mean, it's not much different than like a TRD, but um, here's uh, here's what one of them looks like. See those little legs on the bottom? Mm -hmm. It has four or five little tentacles on the bottom legs tentacles whatever you want to call them and um i'm putting those on that jig head i just told you about i'll, I'll get to the color here in a second yeah that's so interesting about the tickler because i one, one of my friends shout out he got me onto the tickler too and, and he absolutely just swears by it and he, i yeah and it's so weird and you want to rig it like this can, can okay. people see that? 
Yeah. As best I as best I can do it. Well, that looks really good. What color is that? This one right here. I use I use Canada Crawl. What's the other one? I use uh California. Is it California Crawl? Is that what it's Carolina called? Crawl, California Crawl. One I use two, those yeah. two, but but the one I stick to the most is Green Pumpkin. Green pumpkin. And then to yeah, answer yeah. answer the question about what colors I like to use, I like to use anything any uh, a green pumpkin color. You don't need to stick directly, you know, right with green pump, but green pumpkin, black, usually like black and blue, and then a brown color, some type of brown mm. color. I have a I have a color called watermelon brown. I like using. I use uh, that uh, black and gold color that I call SWFA Custom. Do you then, got this on you? And then I have no, I don't have. I don't let me see. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Because he's got a whole tackle shop behind him, guys. So I got to make sure I get the chat happy. And then I, I see all of you watching from home. Can we get a thumbs up, please? Whether it's Facebook or YouTube, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out in the algorithm. Yeah, Ask brown. some questions for Jeff. It's so hard to get Jeff on the show right now. He's super busy. He's got autographs. He takes out new YouTubers yeah, right. every single week. And I think he's gonna take out a president someday of some country. Maybe yeah. Here, here's here's the. Um, I don't have the. Um, I don't have the watermelon brown. I'd have to I'd have to go to my truck. So this is the uh black and gold. Oh, that looks good. If if everyone can see it. And that's a uh three inch stick bait that I just showed you. But um those are the three colors I like to stick with. And then the now, other what... two that, that I'm using on the tickler are the uh Canada Crawl and the um uh, California. I think it's called California Crawl. Now, b behind you on the wall there, um, what type of uh, chatter baits do you like to throw this time of year? Well, I like to throw them whenever the water's, uh, when the water comes up. Gotcha, gotcha. So hold on, hold on here. Any of these colors I'll throw. Let me see here. Can I, no, I can't. I guess I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. I... Here, any of these colors. Can you see them? Yep. I can't flip it. Can I flip this around? Yeah, just flip it around. Just have the phone face it. Just have the phone face it. Can, can you see them? Yep. Are they blurred? Nope, they look good. All right, all of these different colors. I use the uh, 3 8 ounce and a half ounce, and that depends on the current. I so, like the brown one. They're all basic colors. They all, they're either white, white and chartreuse, brown or black. Pretty much. Black chatterbait. That is something I don't think I throw enough of. And then here's here's this one right here. You see that copper truce tickler? Ooh, that's a I like that color. Those work real well. Copper truce. Yep. What size is that? They're uh two and three two and three quarter, two point seven five inches. Oh wow. And that's what the ticklers are. And then and then for the um for the uh thing with the light rod i was talking about i'm using uh those have you seen those micro baits that um, i might i might throw them once or twice yeah the micro baits i'm using micro baits and they're catching every damn thing in the river and since we just had like five more people just pop on the show real quick uh could you uh say that again like what size rod are the light rods that you're using oh they're now? seven foot seven and, foot uh, i'm gonna keep fishing them and then uh, hopefully by, um, you know, late August or whatever, uh, I'll be able to sell them. See how and, I like and, them. And so they're a seven foot rod. Well, what's the action on that? Is it like a medium light, an uh, ultra light? Oh, no, no. They're just light. They're just light. Oh, okay. It's a light rod. It's almost like a trout rod. Yeah. Like fish hawk uses. But it's seven foot long, so you can cast a little bit better. And then and then you can throw all those. Uh, you can throw those Rapala lures. They're called F7s, those floating lures. All the lures that you'd like to throw, but you're like, well, I can't get it out that far. Well, you switch over to something like that. And then you take your line even lower, like your uh, braided line, and maybe just go to 10-pound uh, braid and then mm. a six-pound leader. I, I would like to, I like to credit that I got you onto those tiny baits because I've been just loving those little. No, like, the, uh, those, those, the only, hey, the only color I sell in the tickler, the micro tickler, is the green pumpkin. Dude, that color works so actually we just had another uh chris sherwood chris sherwood thank you but i really appreciate it i love the sw let me try this again because apparently i can't speak i love the swfa oh. tubes 
What color water do you use? The black with gold flake. To? Um, heavily stained. So, so you got for, for me, you've got uh, you've got good good clarity, and then you got you know good clarity as uh, you can see several feet, and then you got stained water, heavily stained water, and then dirty water and muddy water. So ah, anything that's yeah. heavily stained, down. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes a lot of sense, Chris. That's a fantastic question. Thank you so much. And here's a little tiny tickler. Oh, let me pull that up there. Boom. Oh, it looks so good. It, it, lo it does look like a Bitsy tube, honestly. Well, they kind of do, don't they? And you wonder, well, why, yeah. why can't you just use a, a, a one of those crappie baits or something, right? Well, I have no idea. But for whatever reason, they hit the heck out of these things. I mean, you're catching I, everything in the river with this. And I really think that that's going to be more of like the wave of the future, so to speak, where more and more people are going to use those, those almost like you said, crappie style baits to get back. Listen, I was fishing that. I should bring a screen back while I, while I ran here. I was fishing that, that tiny Ned rig. Yeah. Um, I was green pump, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, a green pumpkin. And I, have those I was too. out and I was out fishing the guy next to me when it came to size and it makes no sense why. Yeah. Just I have those there. too. The, the these guy. are easier to see in the package. So I'm giving you the, Copper truce colors Smart. ones. Copper truce. Oh my god, that's such a. I love that color. Yeah. Copper truce. Guys, the micro, especially. I'm a little biased here, but the micro TRD turds. If you, I personally think pick that one, but the micro, the micro ticklers are great too. I, I think Jeff and I can speak to this because I fish them all the time because I have a creek right by my house. If it swims with a mouth, it will eat that. Those yeah. tiny baits, like you will catch anything that swims. It's so much fun. Well, you catch big fish with them too. Ridiculously size large fish with them. It's insane, dude. I don't understand like why they. I, I, maybe it's because no one else fishes them. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have a, a jig head too come out. Um, that I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start making, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a number number six hook on it, and they'll fit those. Uh, Ooh, smart. They'll fit those uh, micro baits pretty good. That's a really good idea because I'm looking for a better hook for those things. Um, because I, I want something with that longer shank hook. It's, it's gonna so be exposed though. Those hooks are gonna be exposed. That's that's fine. in the base because because you're you're thinking of a longer shank hook right it's not gonna be like a tiny crappy hook well no it's just just a regular number number six size hook okay if, yeah, if, if i could find option. one with a longer shank i'll i'll experiment with those too there you go you can invent that but the uh, number uh a number one and a number two hook you can get those in a, a long shank and i like those for swim baits Ooh, that's really uh, do you throw any swim baits this time of year yeah i'll throw swim baits but right now, the baits I'm showing you is all, all I've been catching fish with, and people that are fishing with me are, are catching fish with. But those swim, I like throwing swim baits that are uh, three inches long, three to four. And I that use an eighth ounce jig head on them, and that's it. Oh, wow. That's light. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, though, because like, wh what are the flow rates that you're seeing right now? And if you don't have the numbers on you, that's fine. But just, just ballpark, what are the flow rates that you're dealing with? Like how fast is the water going? Yeah. Uh, probably a mile, uh, one mile, two miles an hour. That's best. pretty, pretty slow. And then so, so, so on the Susquehanna, the water's probably going twice that. That makes more sense. Okay. Cause wh wh what's the gauge at for the Potomac? Generally speaking right now, it should be like somewhere around three, four, three, five. So she's, yeah. Cause we haven't gotten a lot of rain either. Yeah. It was, um, it was falling the last time I checked it. Yeah. So with that said, does that limit or I don't know. And that's the Edwards that... Ferry gauge I'm telling people. So you'd have to, once you go to that gauge, start going up and you'll see the okay. Point of Rocks gauge, Shepherdstown's gauge. You'll see all those different gauges. That's huge because that's going to lead to my next question about this time of year where you got a jet boat. Uh, and I actually ran into a fan today at the gas station. So, you know, huge shout out. It was really good to talk to you. And he, when I told him that I was going to have you on this show, he was like, man, I, I'm going to book a trip with with jeff because i really need to know how to run my jet boat uh in the summertime and i thought that's an interesting question of like as the water gets lower does it limit your water and does it mean you need to have more strategy yeah you, yeah it's, it's gonna it's gonna limit where you go because it depends on your skill level but at the same time you know operating the boat what where you're at and how long you've been running them um because uh i'm not in the business of tearing my boat up so there's places <laughs> i just won't go could I make it through? Probably, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through it. And then you have to worry about the customers and the safety of people. So, um, I don't do that. If it, if it was me, I might be messing around a little bit and the boat's going to be lighter with just me in it anyways. But, uh, yesterday I went through, 
I went through a spot and the gauge was reading like three, five. And, um, I was behind this Island and I'm, I'm going up the river. I'm like, man, that water looks a lot lower than what that gauge is reading. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know why the water just seems that way. Maybe uh, I just haven't been back there this year that much yet, but man, I went through a spot. Uh, it was a guy that fishes with me quite often. So we went up through this one spot. You could hear the gravel underneath the boat as I was going up the river. Cause it was, it was, it was hitting the uh, bottom of the boat. So what level do you feel comfortable to run the whole river river? Oh, you mean where, where I feel like we can go anywhere? Yeah. Like, so like, let's go through the levels. Like at this level, you can run the river. No problem at this level. At, at three, so, so, so let's just make it easy at, at Edwards Ferry gauge anywhere on the river. Once it gets down to uh three and a half below three and a half, like three foot, you know, very, very rarely would you ever see it go below three feet, but if it's three feet, that's dangerous. And if you're not, you're not out there every day fishing it and you're not out there um, as the water falls and you're not used to it every day, falling a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, um, you can hit something. And, but uh, four feet's okay. Uh, once you start getting up around five feet, six feet, you feel like you can just go anywhere. Six feet, you just feel like you, you, you have the whole entire river. You can just run the shoreline and not have to worry about anything. And then we just hit 20 actually viewers. And so just to reiterate that, so at four feet, you could run the whole river. And then you said at like three, two to three feet, that's where you really got to be careful. Yeah, no, three feet, three, three and a half, three um, anywhere between anywhere below four feet, you, you, you should be um, very uh, uh, aware of what's going on. And then again, like just because we've had so many new people just actually turn uh, tune into the show, I really thank it. I really can't appreciate you guys enough for watching. Um, with that said, what is the gauge again right now, Edwards? It should be like the last time I checked this morning or this afternoon, it was like three and a half. There you go. So like that's fairly important to know. And then you really got to think about where you're going to put in at. So you got Edwards Ferry. Um, well, there's fish behind that island, but I didn't take those are. people behind that island today because I'm not going through there anymore. Why? Because it's just too low. Mm-hmm. I'm not hitting something. How's the fishing down um, in the Monocacy, places like that, or I, at the mouth? At the mouth, it's not so good, but um, up way up in the river, it is. People oh, are catching oh. a lot of a lot of small fish. Um, it's pretty uh pretty good. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Captain Chaconis, dude. How are you doing tonight, sir? Jeff knows this portion of the river better than anyone alive. I added that part. What's up, Steve? So that's a uh, guys, if you don't know, that's, that's the legend himself, uh, Mr. I don't know why I call him Mr. Captain Chaconis. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Cause we're just talking about the Upper Potomac river. It, it's so interesting how this is evolves and stuff and, and really the size of the fish that you're catching. What right now, when people go out with you, what can they expect right now? Oh, just an, an average day catch wise numbers. Yeah. Um, and that's hard to say because it just depends on the, how hot, the, how hot it's going to get, you know? Um, on a four hour trip, I don't know, 25 fish, 30 fish. That's pretty good. Um, a lot of smaller fish, but early in the morning is when we can, uh, make our mark, so to speak, uh, on a, uh, on a big fish. I'm betting that's probably going to be the, uh, um, that's going to be when it's going to happen. Even though I, you showed that picture of that one that we caught on that trip. And that was, that was in the afternoon. That's a and freak. That that that's a freak freak accident. That that thing was an absolute freak. And and don't worry, guys. I'll bring the picture of that spawn mouth back up again a little bit later in the show. Uh, when you mean morning, though, for that morning bite, uh, I think that's let's narrow that down. Are you talking about like from five forty five in the morning till about six thirty? Oh wow, that's a really tight window. Okay, yeah. gotcha. You're not joking. Yeah. Dang. And, th- and then again, you know, his favorite bait to throw that time of year is the Whopper Plopper. Oh, we got another question. You guys are just hammering them. I love it. Oh, here we go. Chris again. Brilliant idea to have Jeff on the show. Well, he's a legend. Of course, we're going to have Jeff on the show uh, to show you how to run a jet boat. It seems I hit something almost every time I go out in mine or if I or if my intake could tell stories. Yeah, uh, I think it's the hardest thing to do, honestly, is run a jet boat until you get used to it like because you're gonna end up hitting stuff like that's yeah, gonna no, you're gonna you're gonna um uh bump stuff grind stuff that's just what happens and uh even today i i still uh i still find rocks 
uh, when the water levels are uh, fluctuating. I find rocks that um, I probably should have known were there. What is the worst? What's the best story you have about running a jet boat where you hit something? I'd say the worst or best, but pick. You know, pick I don't story. really have anything. Uh, I mean, nothing. I've never come out of the boat or anything. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've run completely aground before. I was running along and all of a sudden I've stopped. It took me like wow. 15 minutes. I was so, I was so, uh, uh, this was many, many years ago. I was so, uh, far up on the shore that, um, it took me forever to push the boat off. And it was like November. I had to take my, was it? Yeah, it was, it was late November. I had to take my shoes and socks off and I got in the water it was 44 degrees that day. And I was pushing that damn thing off those, uh, off the, off the, uh, rocks, gravel bar, whatever you want to call it. What I was happened? Out there for probably like <laughs> five minutes in 44 degree water. And um, it was like, it felt like uh, some type of therapy to my feet. What was it like you hit an iceberg or did uh, it was a oh, little? Man, it, was, like, it sounded ugly. Hit? I just ran aground. Ugh. I just ran a little too close to the shore. <sighs> Dude, I, I don't know. It, it, the sounds, I, I've beached my Ranger boat on a mud flat and it's whatever. The engine just goes bah, and it, you're stuck. Dude, when you hit rock. <laughs> yeah, well, boat. you know, those, those aluminum <laughs> buttons. This wasn't a bad spot. It was just gravel, no. a large, large, large um, gravel, you know, uh, like golf ball size gravel, so to speak. And um, it took it a minute to come to a stop, but it did. But, you know, that was because probably as well, there's, a, you know, looking back on it, there was enough water there. The problem is what, what you have to learn and you have to be uh, uh, disciplined in when you're operating one of those boats is uh, you just got, you have to keep it up on plane no matter what. I mean, unless the rock is completely protruding out of the water, we got to do something. But if you're going mm. over and you're like, oh, damn, and you see the water get real, real shallow, you just got to keep uh, keep the throttle open. And more than likely, you'll just slide over. It'll sound bad, but you'll, you'll go over top of it. Yeah, and it's so important to really understand how you read the water. And I think we're going to do a segment on that where we can get some good drone shot footage or I can get something else like that in here so we can actually walk through. Because you're looking for specific tunnels or funnels, correct? That you're going to Yeah, find. yeah, you're, you're looking for you're looking for disturbances on the uh on the surface. And then if the once the water gets so low, the current slows down. And if the current comes to almost like a crawl, there's certain places where the rocks are, you can't read them anymore. You have to know they're there. Oh, wow. Or, or just stay away from that area. And then, guys, I will just say, like, that is the one nice thing. If you can't afford it someday and you guys have a jet boat or thinking about getting one, get a little GPS unit that has trails that you can mark. It is helpful. You don't necessarily need it, but it is kind of a nice little thing to have. No, it's a good thing. Let me see if I can get this up. All right, guys, I'm going to try to see if I can get my Google Earth working with my internet with hopefully not losing anything because I really want, now that we have the legend on here, to uh, to go look at some river rapids with us because yeah that is so vitally important that you actually know what you can actually run on that river i mean you shouldn't be running the jet boat through white water though you know i mean what sections are absolutely a no-go right now oh i would think uh, up around brunswick would be really tough to run Ooh, that's a good one all right and then right knoxville there. falls you're not getting up through there here we go too bad they don't take like daily photos somehow. I really wish they did. All right, this is here we go. Let's see where where we are, Brunswick. Oh, here we go. Here's a good. This is right above Brunswick, right here. So we got Brunswick here, campgrounds. Yeah, that's like a minefield of rocks right now. Whew. There might be some people brave enough to run it, but um, I don't think you're going to get out of that area um, uh, which, without which, putting some which... marks on your boat. Which side is deeper right now? Is it the Maryland side or the Virginia side? It should be the Maryland side. Okay, so you're you're following this this channel right through here. Yeah, you're gonna follow up the Maryland. You always run up the Maryland side once you get up above the bridge at Brunswick. What is that? The 17 bridge? Yeah, we just passed it. Yeah. Ooh. Now, and I'll I'll tell you something that uh, rule I always follow is um, when you're in a jet boat and you're running you're running these rivers, unless you're absolutely positive that um you know that section of river very well don't ever cross from shore to shore east to west on plane because you're going to hit a <laughs> rock you don't even see that is damn good advice 
and then when you hit a rock that way, that the rock, it's not like you're just going to go over top of a rock that's smooth and it's going to sound bad, but it won't do any damage. Um, you'll probably put a hole in your boat. Yeah, that, that's guys, that is such a great piece of information, you know, with that way, the way water hits the rock and smooths it out, that makes absolute sense. And if you're going to hit it, go upstream or downstream, but don't go veering across because you can even feel that on the rocks when you're waiting the, the creek on how they're slippery on one end, but they're jagged on the other. Yeah, usually going, you're heading downriver is, is when the rocks are smooth. You definitely don't want to hit hit a ledge that's facing downriver when you're going upriver, but there we go. you should, you should use caution when you cross from. The Virginia side, you know, using a uh, an example from Maryland to the Virginia side or Virginia to the Maryland. And so right here, guys, on Google Earth, I think this is a really good tell that we got Contocton Creek right here that dumps right in. We got Landers Boat boat Ramp. If you go up here. Oh, that's ugly so, up there right now, man. Yeah, it, it I, I, can, I can see. Yeah, that's pro that, that's real ugly up there right now. Now, if if there was a little bit more water on here, I think this is a good learning uh, experience for people. This V right through here, are, are these the funnels that you would be shooting if there's enough water? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So guys, just to give you kind of a visual of what these would look like. Now, I know, the, I know the one that you have your little cursor on right now. That one right there. When the water yeah. gets low, that one gets, uh, that one gets real nasty. And then really? the one up, um, up above would probably be your best one to go through in low water. Right through here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is technically the outside bend, isn't it? Right through here. Yeah. Dude, Katachin Creek does not have a lot of water in it. No, there's not much water in there right now. That's insane. Dude, that's insane. Now, if we scroll down, let's go all the way down, uh, really towards the Leesburg area. And this is honestly, to me, what I think is like the forgotten piece of the Upper Potomac is you get close to Leesburg. I just feel like people don't think there's fish there because it's next to a big city, but it's so it can be so good from Seneca up. Yeah, how is this stretch right now when it comes to like fishing and the ability to actually get your boat in and out? Is there a lot of water this time of year in this area? I haven't been down to Seneca in in, in a while right now, and uh, my guess would be there's grass everywhere. Okay, uh, right off of right out of Seneca Creek, it's hmm. probably just full of grass. But um, that's a recreational area from Dam Two, and about two miles up to the first um, first island. Or sec maybe second island people use. Right here. Yeah, and all the way down to the uh to dam two is pretty much like recreational. And uh it's you can run in there, but you're probably gonna run it run through a bunch of grass right now. Is there any largemouth in that section? Yeah, there's largemouth in Seneca Creek. Oh wow. And um if you can find a, a decent enough uh patch of grass. You could pull largemouth off of, off of uh, those grass patches in the middle of the river. You see, that'd be fun to do. Is you're actually flipping the Upper Potomac for largemouth? That's kind of it's kind of epic. I'm, right I've, I've caught them out in the middle of the river before, and that's you know that that's that's not something that you would you would think would happen, but I've had it happen to me before. That's so freaking cool. And you get this stretch right here that's actually down below Dam Two, which I, again is I feel like no one fishes this either. Oh, that a lot of people weighed that and they use their kayaks and canoes and stuff. Ooh, Black Point Conservatory. That's insane. Now, so in the comments section in the chatter, the doc talks, people are saying that they're catching snakehead on the upper Potomac. Have you heard any of that doc talk before? No, no. Um, I thought that they were in the um, in the canals. I yeah, I've heard that, too, that they're in the canals. I mean, I, everyone keeps saying, like, oh, yeah, I have a friend that caught one. Probably did, but I just kind of want proof before I'd be like, oh, yeah, 100% they're in the upper. Now, I've never seen one up there and all that from Seneca on up. How, 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 uh, how's the flathead right now? Oh, they're okay. Um, I, I really haven't been messing with them too much. Um, they're, uh, a good spot to, uh, you know, so some of the spots that are good for flathead. Um, I'm not fishing them because I'm fishing for bass and others, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but anywhere on the Potomac, upper Potomac, where you can find a deep hole that's five, six feet deep, and it seems to be the deepest portion of that stretch of river, um, you probably have a good chance of catching flathead. Monocacy. Boom. The Monocacy dumps in. How's this section of fishing right now? Um, good. 
but there's a lot of grass. You can't go very far right now. Can and with, you catch and, and with a jet oh. boat? With a jet boat, you have to be careful running running the river. And and even though you know where you're going, if you haven't been out there and and you don't know where the grass is, if you start going through a real shallow section and you suck grass up, you're gonna come off plain and you're gonna hit the bottom of the river. Ew. So you have, no to, you have to keep that in mind when you're running your jet boat. So some places that you haven't been, you might not want to go right now because uh, there's uh, there's just not a lot of water. But if you get how, if, if we get some rain and the water comes up, you know, a foot or two, um, then you go up into those areas and uh, see what's going on. How hard is it to steer a jet boat compared to a prop? Um. It's different because there's no, uh, when you steer, it's like steering it. Uh, you have to be under power to really steer it. Meaning you have mm. to, uh, you have to have the throttle down a little bit to be able to go left or right. Okay. That makes sense. Cause I've, I've always, I've always wanted to make sure we got that question answered. Is, is, yeah, is no, they, they don't steer okay. like a, um, they don't steer like a, uh, prop boat would. And they're terrible in reverse. Really? Yeah, I mean they'll they'll, they'll you can back them up, but you have to be um, you have to do it slow. They're the only type of boat though that you can slow slow down as a jet boat because really? you can go from um, from going forward, going in, you know putting in gear and going forward to just throw it in in reverse going down the river because it's oh, just wow. it's just all it's just a you know the back is just a, a like a coupling that goes up and down. Hmm, huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, you you can slow the boat down pretty quick. That's pretty cool. So, I mean, with that said, and we've kind of, we kind of you know, hinted at this earlier in the show, but since we're up to 21 listeners on YouTube, guys, please hit that like button. It really helps out in the algorithm. With all the grass on the river, how do you approach the smallmouth with just the grass if there's no trees around? So if you just have to gun to your head, fish the grass, are you just using, is there a specific bait? Find, that you're gonna be well, you're finding edges of the grass okay. and start on those. Flukes are working. Really? I'm using flukes. Yeah. Uh, flukes up to even five inches long. They're working green pumpkin, like a brown color, depending on the water clarity of black. Um, and an eighth ounce um, swim bait hook. Ooh. A three ot on the five inch um, works pretty good, but you're going to fish the edges first. Those grass patches are funny because, um, uh, there could be a mile long stretch of grass and the fish are only in a hundred yards of that grass. Wow. So I've gone out recently if I don't have a trip and I'll just fish certain, um, certain stretches of grass. Um, and it'll take me a, a few hours just to find fish. Buddy, that's, that's grass fishing, man. If yeah. You're on the tile, and then once you find them though, once you find them, uh, they'll be there. Loaded. Yeah, they'll, 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 you, you can come back the next day or day after that, and um, you'll be able to pull fish off of it. It's the greatest lottery system in the world. You throw in there, and it's just like playing a scratcher. And all of a sudden, when your number comes out, dude, it's not just one. It's always a couple. And there's usually pretty good fish. I'll tell you what, those flukes seem to catch uh, better quality fish. Now, what size fluke are you throwing right now? The five inch. Five inch. And wow. the reason why is because it's low and it's clear, and you can you can just toss those things. I mean, you can get them uh, real far away from the boat. You really can. Are you? Are you? I mean, are you throwing that nose hooked, or are you actually? No, I'm, I'm using that three out hook. That um, like that swim bait hook. You ever seen those with the weight on the, on the um shaft of the uh, hook? Yes, like, belly like hook. belly hooked almost. You know, I mean, be uh, the the hook the weight is on the belly of the bait, so to mm -hmm. speak. I'm throwing those. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, gotcha. they they sell they have a good one to get is at walmart um berkeley i think it's berkeley makes it hmm. that's a really good idea oh my goodness we have so many questions i forgot to get to sorry we got chris again so i can volunteer as a spec for a special show where i can show how not to do it then jeff can go show us how to do it i'm assuming you're either talking about driving a jet boat or fishing either way he's jeff probably talking boat. about his jet boat and then we got another one from chris jeff do you have any tricks for picking gravel out of your intake? Oh God, Chris. <laughs> uh, or are they, are they stuck in the grate? Let's assume yes. Um, you know, uh, 
you're just gonna have to have something that can that you can shove preferably something metal that you can shove mm -hmm. into the uh into the grate you don't want to you don't want to keep hitting the uh impeller though the, the the blade but shove it in there and, and uh try to pull it out push it out probably a stick from home depot or something like that you probably grab a metal rod from there and yeah um i have this uh i have this hook remover and um I, it's a long hook remover it's it's ridiculous looking so i don't use it other than to uh reach up inside there and grab stuff out of the um out of the intake do you have it right now can yeah, we see it yeah I'll, I'll get it hold on chris man he chris you were helping chris out he's getting his money worth tonight my goodness i mean guys yeah please keep continue to ask questions it really helps us out uh, again this episode is just for the live viewers. It will be unlisted after the show, and it's going to be re-uploaded on Wednesday. And I'll make sure the audio levels are good and all that stuff. It's, so uh, make sure it, you get your questions. It looks like this. I mean, it looks like a like a surgical tool. Good but lord, it's long. Hmm. Oh, where is it? Where is it? This way. Put it towards your face. There you go. Yeah. And I just oh, use it. I, I just I just push it up into the uh, into the um, into the grate and and pull down trying to just knock you, whatever it is you out. have a great crankbait selection good lord i'm jealous those work man oh i got some of these in too some uh the uh rapalus they work good too Ooh, what size are those the dt4s oh love those yeah so oh, those dt4s are free freaking awesome but yeah no, guys, that's that's uh something like that a tool like that they probably make tools that you probably can buy do. from like Mercury or uh, some type of uh, boat shop, but I've never really looked into it. I would imagine they do. And, and and then guys, this is actually a great segue to talk about this. We are going to be setting up a special show where we're going to be talking about boat welding. And then we're also going to be on, on location. I'm going to be on location for this, but we're going to talk about boat welding. And we're also going to be talking about, I think, jet boat maintenance and things like that uh probably going to be late august september -ish since i'm so booked up but that is going to be coming so we can get all your questions answered about that specifically so that that's going to be a really great show um oh here's another thing since we're talking about boat maintenance real quick i had an issue with my boat not too long ago and the um uh, the guys at abc marine helped me out if you guys don't know where that is that's in thermont maryland the guys that operate or that that uh the, the mechanics there they operate jet boats so they know jet boats they work mm -hmm. on them they convert them into uh, they they convert uh outboards into um outboard jets you know prop motors um they're very knowledgeable well i had an issue recently where my uh my boat was throwing an alarm and it kept telling me my um uh, injector was was bad or going bad and it used the uh, terminology it says uh non-critical at this at this point or something on my gauge hmm. and um uh they checked the uh the injector they 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 did several things and what it came down to because this is a mercury outboard what it came down to is a wiring harness they're in there so tight they straight you know they stretch them out so tight that it was leaning up against a um uh a, a metal bracket that was painted and I don't know how long it took it to do this, but the wire, and it happened to be the wire to the injector, was rubbing on that metal bracket for so long and vibrating that it vibrated the paint right off the uh, uh, steel bracket, and it um, vibrated the, uh, it ate through the uh, wire, and it, wow. and it brought it up to where it was just bare wire. And that, I lost a lot of power out of the outboard doing that. Were you able to get fixed? Yeah, and after they fixed it, I got. Um, it's incredible how much more power I have. It's just insane with that stuff. Like, I feel like engines nowadays are becoming overcomplicated in how they make it. Like, my wife has this um, Volkswagen Tiguan. It's German made, which means it's complicated as shit. And it every day it feels like there's a new problem with it. And at this point, we're literally just trying to save up to get a new vehicle, and it's because it's over engineered. And there's too much computer chips and wiring and shit like that in there. And I feel like with a lot of the newer boat engines, it's the same thing. It's just over engineered. Yeah, it's um that that wiring harness, he followed the injector all the way back and he was looking at the wires. 
And it just happens that portion of the wiring harness that was uh, rubbing up against that metal bracket doesn't have wire loom on it. And mm. it's not even um, taped up. So it, it caused that wire to rub bare, you know, down to, to the wire. And um, I guess it was hitting that uh, metal, um, uh, the metal bracket. And it only would do it when I was up on, when I was wide open up on plane. Wow. So I, I, that just shows you too, how much stuff vibrates in that motor. And that again is a uh, ABC Marine. Yeah. ABC Marine in Thurmont, Maryland. That's awesome. I can't believe there's a, I didn't know there was a dealership that close. That's awesome. Oh, they're just, a, they're a mechanic shop. Okay. And uh, you can also store your boat there too. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. good to know. I, I have some issues with my boat that I need to get fixed. Yeah. They, well, <laughs> they can fix it, man. I'm telling you, they're, uh, they're pretty good. Dude. I have like my rod lockers are starting to rot off and so one of them is like all broken up and i need to either get a new one welded or something because it like it the rivets popped out and i don't have a rivet gun so i gotta figure out how to fix rivets so that'll be f a fun project to do this well this when fall. you hey, when you go on location at, yep. at, at the well um welding uh site uh he'll 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 show you that's actually he does idea. work like that there you go there's another segment guys that we're going to be doing on location which will be a lot of fun uh, but again, so for that episode, like, please let us know all the questions beforehand that you'd want me to have answered or stuff like that, because uh, I think that's going to be a really good show, because I think aluminum boat culture is it it deserves attention in its own time. In the I can't believe more uh, uh, tournament pros don't run uh, aluminum boats. Why is that? I think do they Chad have to run those out. fiberglass boats? Well, Chad, help me out here, but you have to run. You don't have to run, but. A 250 is standard, a 250 engine. And so if you're going to be running a 250, you need an aluminum boat that can actually handle that. And there are companies that make aluminum boats. You have Express is one, Crestliner is another. Keith Poche runs a custom 10 rig. But the other thing is just think about like, there's just more, I think, fiberglass brands than aluminum that's out there. I, I think aluminum is great. I think aluminum is cheaper by far. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is easier to take care of? Is it a fiberglass boat or an aluminum boat? Oh, it would probably be aluminum boat. Really? Yeah, the fiberglass boat. You know, you have to really make sure you keep it clean and everything. Why? You, well, the uh, the hull can crack and all kinds of stuff. If you don't clean it? Well, no, just you, know, you just have to take care of it. I mean, if it if you bump something hard enough, I'm I'm sure it'll crack it. Oh yeah, yeah. I just thought if you if, I thought you meant if you don't clean it, it'll crack. No, no, no. Uh, aluminum boat's easy to clean because you can just take a power washer to it i don't think you can hit a um, fiberglass boat with a power washer up real close to get stuff off of it and i think you have to be real careful yeah i mean you got to scrub it down um you don't want the sun to oxidize and stuff like that i don't have a fancy garage or anything to keep my boat in so i've i'm always terrified of like sun oxidation on it yeah but i think i think you're right there the biggest thing the biggest difference i see with it is the fact that with an aluminum boat, you can bash it into stuff and not worry about it, rocks and stuff. Or and even is, at the dock, you can bump yeah. into stuff at the dock and and it really doesn't, you know, it's nothing that you're going to look twice at. But one of those um, expensive fiberglass boats, you hit the you hit the dock wrong or something and it's going to it's going to scar the uh, the boat up or mar it up or something like that. You know, it really is. It's just where are you going to be fishing? I mean, if, if you're fishing a lot of small lakes, not big water. So I think the tidal Potomac is big water because of the, oh, washing yeah. machine over the tide, uh, Lake Erie, Vermont, places like that, get a fiberglass boat. Cause they're a little bit safer. If you're fishing Lake Anna, Smith mountain Lake, places like that, aluminum boats, perfect. You're not going to have to deal. Uh, a boat wake is not going to hurt you in one of those boats. If I, hey, got, if I guided down on that, uh, tidal Potomac with Steve Chaconis. But sp fiberglass boats is sparkly. If, if, you if I if I ever um, if, if I did get which I never would, because I'm not driving down to the district every day to to uh, put a boat in with the traffic. But the um, uh, if I guided in water like that, uh, I would just use an aluminum boat. One of those bass trackers. Have you seen those things? The 17 and like 17 and 19 foot bass trackers they have. Those would be perfect. Yeah. I think they're, I think they're like really on the cool. lower Potomac. Yeah. Um, the night. Yeah. That would work. probably be big enough. Express has a good one. Yeah. Vexus has one. 
because I'm thinking like one that has a big enough engine so you can actually really get on plane. And, yeah, and I mean, I wouldn't make. take something like that under the Great Lakes though, but probably you probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think thing. you should. But um, no, the uh, Lower Potomac you probably could uh, do just fine with it. The other thing that's interesting to get into is like just aluminum boats with like an electric outboard because that's getting huge too. Like there's so many lakes. And I got chat, you know, let me know if I'm wrong. Comment section. I mean, you guys will, of course, you'll always let me know if, I, um, if I'm wrong here. But I think Virginia has the second or third most amount of lakes that are electric motor only. That's why like Torquedo and those fancy like electric motor brands are really invested in Virginia waters because we have so many small lakes. And so I think a tiny boat is also a great pick, too. If you're not thinking about tournaments like Aquaquan Reservoir, I think Aquaquan Reservoir is like rated number one uh, for size of fish. You can only have like a nine, nine horsepower, 10 horsepower, something like that on there. So some, some thought there. Yeah, there's so many designs. And then you got kayaks, the whole kayak world that's blown up too. Oh, Steve, it gets, yeah, Steve, Steve must be on vacation tonight or something. Goodness gracious. I have an all electric boat for uh, a West Virginia lakes. Steve's electric boat is absolutely sick. It's really freaking cool. I, it's like, I, I don't want to go to his channel guys link in the episode description obviously like steve's youtube channel i think he does a walkthrough of of his electric boat it is pretty cool it's like a tracker that he just modded the heck out of it's it's a really cool thing but i don't know that that is interesting i do want a jet boat someday i really want to get a jet boat a little one just to be able to run through some of these places a little bit easier um and then probably a new kayak because i'm really thinking about fishing the hobie obs series next year um i don't know I just How come no one talk. ever talks about those fishing rafts? The like white water rafts. I don't know. People, I really people don't. are hung up on the uh, kayaks and the canoes, but those Turn rafts, on. man, they're stable and they pretty much go anywhere. 100% agree with you. I, I went out with uh, Travis Eden Kingfisher Guide Services last That's the exact night. kind of one I'm talking about. Yep. And it's like, oh, there's a rock. It's just oop right over it. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, I think honestly, it's, the money's in tournament fishing. The reason kayaking went, I believe, hypothesis wise, it got big is because you can tournament fish. Oh, if yeah. you had a raft tournament league, people would be into rafts. <laughs> I, I, I mean, so example is uh, the Ho the Hobie Open Bass Series, Hobie OBS Series, just finished up on the New River. You pay about three hundred bucks, and you have a chance to win five grand. Insane return on investment. You don't need a bass boat. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars in gasoline. All you need is a kayak. And guess what? For the Hobie series, you don't a trolling motor is illegal. Just a kayak. Oh, that's and cool. but then again, now you're like, oh wow, shit, three hundred bucks. I can win five thousand. Take my money. I think that really helped kayak fishing get as big as it did. If you didn't have that tournament incentive, I would be curious to know, like, would kayaking be as big? I mean, it, it would be around, but I don't think it'd be as, if there was a jet boat only league and you guys could win a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> jet boating would explode. <laughs> it would explode. Just follow the money. I wonder how bad the, um, how bad people would damage their boats. <laughs> Dude, the, the footage would be awesome. Oh, it would be, uh, would yeah, it. the, the, uh, the YouTube, <laughs> uh, shorts would be epic. Uh, by the way, that was a really good video you put together. Which one? Oh, that little, uh, that, that thing I put together. Yeah. yeah. Those are, uh, those are like, um, from iMovie, they're trailers. I mess around with that stuff sometimes. I, I dude, it was like a pump. I, I wanted to go deadlift or something after listening to that thing. <laughs> the music was epic. Yeah. It's better than pre-workout. Yeah. Those, those are, uh, they, they have some pretty cool options. What, if you had your option, where, what, what river would you like to fish for fun? Like if you could t a jet boat only kind of river fish for fun, probably the Potomac. <laughs> I would no Potomac. Give me another one. Oh, uh, uh, not the Susquehanna either. Yeah, Cause you already do that all the time. Yeah. Probably the new river, the new river. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. New river would be cool too. I would like to go. I saw see, Jeff it's, it's supposedly it's possibly um, the oldest river in the world. They say. They don't it's know. Super old. It's up there in like the top three or top two. And it flows uh, north. north to south. Yeah. yeah, wait, south to north? Yeah, yeah, south to north. Sorry, dyslexic as hell. And, yeah. and most of the best fishing is actually below the Clater Lake Dam. Oh, really? 
which is above. I've never even been. I, I was on the I was on the New River min, um, years ago when I was a teenager on a white wa water rafting trip. And that's the only time yeah. I've ever been on the New River, and let me tell you what, those rapids were awful. They are. That thing is intense. It's wild. It's so cool. It's so wild. I think that place is so fascinating because yeah. it's like at at the edge of the world. When you think of the James River that flows through Richmond and then, of course, the Upper Potomac is D.C. And then the new is like Jurassic Park in the middle of nowhere down in Blacksburg. And it's got the smallmouth state record to its name. And it also has some really big muskie to its name. So yeah. I, that place is just fascinating to me. It really is. Um Jeff, I don't, I don't want to keep you on. I know you're a busy man. Uh, what else do you have going on right now? Oh, not much. I have a, um, I have a sale on at S SWFA Bates. I have a sale on uh, spinning reels right now, and they're 20% uh, off. The, the awesome. uh, Fuegos and the uh, Daiwa Tatulas. Um, and just go to my website and check out what I have. Everything I, I have on there, I use. So uh, you'll be able to catch fish with it. 100%. And then closing thoughts for tonight. When will you start seeing a change from these dog days of summer going into the fall? When September. do you really start seeing the change? Is it September? Yeah, and September. Um, you, you you'll, you'll see the fish's behavior change in August. I think, um, I, I feel like the, the fish, uh, I'm just speaking on the Potomac right now, and mm -hmm. maybe for the Susquehanna where, where I fish. I mean, they're, they're, they're similar, but the Potomac River, um, I, I feel like, the fish have 12 seasons. There's a January, February, March, April, May, June, July. They do something different every month, I feel like. And I find them in the same places. Every hmm. month, they're in the same places that they were last year. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. And then, so what in September clues you in that things have changed then? Well, the water yeah. starts cooling down. And the, um, and the class of fish gets better. The quality of fish starts getting better. You start seeing fish, you're like, where in the heck did this fish come from? And you start catching better quality fish uh, later in the day, you know. It's just hmm. that things just change. And then um, types of lures you can use. Well, you know, we're going to get more rain and the water comes up. You'll be able to use uh, uh, with and you'll be very efficient at catching fish with crankbaits, chatterbaits. Uh, when that grass starts dying off um, and you can find an area where the grass is just all over the place float down the river jerk baits you know in october when that grass starts dying from the cold weather hmm. yeah um and you can just do trips on actual lures and not have to use plastics and then you know you can keep in those those uh top that top water bite will get real good mm. dude i can't wait yeah we're gonna get there guys but hey for all you out there be safe on the water. Be safe. This is the best time to go waiting. Go book a trip with Jeff. Get out there. Catch a big one. Uh, again, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about. Uh, this episode is going to be privatized for now so I can polish up the audio, but it's going to be re-uploaded in 48 hours on Wednesday morning. So live and episodes hey, use are those, just you guys um, People question. need to uh, check out those uh, micro baits. Yes. Don't think micro because baits. you're little, you're just going to catch panfish. You're going to catch everything you're in the river. They're going to catch everything. I've been hyping those things up since I saw them from ICAST or the shit. No one throws them except me and Jeff. Apparently. Use, use and a light rod with them. Light. Light rod. And you, want, you want to use braided line, like a 10-pound braided line, and go with six-pound, shoot even a four or six-pound um, leader. Yeah. I think six is good because, it, like you said, you're going to catch some big ones. You're, yeah. You, you yeah, really uh, are. Six-pound, yeah, four or six-pound uh, leader. And um, it's it's incredible. Because I've just started it, playing with them um, this summer. It, it doesn't make sense, but it makes all the sense in the world. And I because we're going to that that finessier stuff. You can see the industry. I mean, the, the industry is going. They have no clue what just hit them. I mean, we we smoked yeah. them with those little ones up on the Susquehanna. Is that what you caught the big one on? No, I caught that one on a um, on a uh, one of my uh, stick baits. Stick baits. Yeah. Yeah. And then guys, a link in the episode description, of course, just you can go there right now if you want to and click on it and get some of Jeff's baits. It's linked right to the store. Please help support him. Like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle.
located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.